Chris here, another quick tip for you all. In this video, we're gonna continue our look at painting the Infinity model from the Pan Oceana. And as you can see, we already have the armor and everything already laid out. And so next we're gonna work on the cloak. And so for that, we are going to get started with some Administratum Gray. Or whatever mid-tone gray you happen to have if you're using you know, P3 or Vallejo or whatever colors you're using. And very simply here, we're just gonna take a very heavy helping of Lemayne Medium to help thin it out. You could use water for this uh, instance. Uh, it's just, I find that uh, with the medium, I have maintained better control, but you can use water in this, in this case, as we are simply just going to establish a nice solid base coat of gray onto the uh, cloak and to up uh, onto the uh, shoulders where the cloak meets the rest of the armor and his, his collar and everything like that. And all just kind of looks like one big jacket kind of thing. And as you see, we're just quickly working our way through because we have the paint thinned out in a little bit. We have to uh, work in multiple layers. And of course, when we're working in multiple layers, we are uh, alternating our brush strokes as we work our way across the model. So if you were running your brush strokes north to south, then you want to alternate your brush strokes east to west, so to speak, just to avoid any kind of uh, brush strokes. And that applies to any time you're base coating it, uh, to avoid any kind of brush strokes and anything like that. Usually with the airbrush, you know, you get a nice smooth base coat, but if you're going to do it by hand, that is the best way to do it. And as you can see here, once we have our base coat laid out and we're very happy with that, we're going to move into some Drakenoff Nightshade. We're going to use a, a very heavy helping of Lemayne Medium. I'm just going to put a nice big couple dollops of uh, shade onto the palette, and then we're going to take a couple dollops of um, Lemayne Medium it's kind of roughly, I guess, one to one of uh, shade to medium. We really want to thin this down quite a bit, but not so much that we're changing the uh, the chemistry of the uh, shade wash because we want to keep that quality where it creeps into all the little details and everything. We want to maintain that. And so if we were using water, that would break down the viscosity of the paint, and we don't want that. So that's why we're using medium in this instance. But we were using medium, we're thinning it out because we don't want to change the overall surface value of the cloak too much introduce a little bit of uh, blue gray to the tone as well just make it a little bit interesting and also keeps it nice the model feeling nice and cool as we have those little blue tones running through the uh, entirety of this model again you can see how the medium or the uh, shade wash does reside within the recesses but is not uh, you know is not the color isn't overbearing on any of the flat surfaces and of course we made sure that we didn't um, you know hit into other areas. And once that's dry, we are going to come in and we're going to grab some Silly Putty. We're going to mask off uh, the rest of the model as we are going to airbrush the uh, rest of the highlights onto this um, cloak. Now, we could do it by dry brushing. We could also do it by layering. And, and it's entirely up to you as to what kind of techniques you're comfortable with. Uh, for speed's sake, I'm going to use the airbrush here. And for that, I'm going to use the uh, Silly Putty to mask off any areas of the model here, I'm just simply using my X-Acto blade to kind of push the Sully Putty into some uh, corners just so they get nice sharp edges and you don't have any kind of you know abstract blobbies kind of occurring onto the uh, model surface. Ulthran Gray is next, and this is from the Citadel Airline. That's a nice thin color, but we're gonna thin it down even more with some Aircast Thinner. We wanna apply this really, really thin, and we wanna build the color up gradually because we're gonna run a full length of the cloak but we don't want to, you know, kill any of the shadows that we've created onto the model. And so basically what I'm doing is I'm spraying uh, across the model surface, across that cloak surface. So I'm only catching the high points and leaving the low points alone, in theory. Again, so it's basically it's spraying, uh, you know, horizontally across the cloak and then just spraying a little up the length of the cloak towards the body but we want to leave some of that kind of darker in closer to the body and we want to have more of the color built up at the ends of the cloak and at the high points of the cloak as well. And so you'll notice that when you spray it from one direction that it kind of looks kind of funny and so you do have to spray it from the other direction but that's where you run the risk of kind of obscuring some of your shadows and that's where you got to be careful about how you're positioning your brush and so again like I'm saying you're spraying it at a horizontal kind of angle to the model and now you can see how the shadows still remain but we have all a nice rich color built up 
And so next, once that's all dry, of course, we leave it set for a while and let it dry. We come in and we demask the model, basically just very carefully pick the uh, silly putty right off the model. And again, because the silly putty doesn't uh, have any kind of real stickiness to it, it doesn't stick to the model surface, and so it's a really great masking tool in that regard. We're gonna grab Ultraman Gray again, but this time it's the Citadel regular layer stuff. Uh, thin it down a little bit of medium, just a little bit, and we are basically gonna edge highlight uh, the cloak details on the uh, model itself. And this isn't for the uh, the main body of the cloak, but this is for the uh, shoulder pads, the collar, and the um, the open breast part. Uh, I don't know what the, those you know those flaps that are on a jacket. I don't know what that's called. Open flaps on a jacket, I guess. And so again, you can see it's a very simple edge highlight we're doing on these parts. We're just trying to keep it very, very minimal, of course, because again, like I said, we, when we did the shade wash, we didn't really want to change too much of the overall surface value. And so when we come back in with the same color that, uh, again, it gives us nice bright contrast in these areas. And that's really what we're looking for is a nice contrast kind of look as it will complement nicely with the rest of the model. And because we went with this nice kind of blue gray, It'll all uh, tie in nicely together and maintain this uh, fairly uniform, cool feeling on the model. Again, we're just being very, very careful and very, very deliberate as we apply our edge highlights all over the place. Really no rhyme or reason. There's, it's not, we've gone with kind of, you know, traditional kind of highlighting scheme for the cloak itself, like the, the, uh, the tail end of the cloak. But we go with a bit of an edge highlight on the uh, details on the body and... Uh, it's not terribly realistic, but uh, a lot of the Infinity models are not terribly realistic either, so uh, no concerns there. White Scar with some LeMay and Medium. We slap a little bit of this onto our palette, we thin it down just a little bit with some Medium. And again, I do prefer Medium over Water, uh, because again, when we thin it down and we do kind of edge highlighting and things like that, or even glazing, uh, you do maintain a lot better control rather than if you had used Water water does break down the viscosity of the paint and it begins to flow more like a watercolor it kind of goes all over the place and kind of pulls up and bubbles up and doesn't you know cooperate versus when you thin it down with medium you get much better control and when you're going in with these fine little lines and such and trying to find these little details you do want to maintain control Again, you see there's just a simple little edge highlight on the end of the cloak and just kind of catching some of these little fold lines, these little details that are on the cloak, and I'm catching just the high points of the cloak as well. Again, we get it, giving the impression that the cloak is, is a white cloak, but yet we've used very, very little white. Uh, I think that's a lot of fun. Uh, again, we could have gone with, you know, Uthran Grey, just a very subtle shade highlight, and gone with mostly white as our highlight color, but... Uh, I didn't really feel it was necessary and I felt that we uh, maintaining a lot more contrast on these areas uh, would would serve a lot better for the model as we have such a contrasty looking uh, armor tones. And so very carefully just picking on just some of the high points on the uh, cloak and other details. And that's really about it. Just catching some of these corners, being as very careful as we can. Of course, you can see on the end of the brush, you can get that little buildup of uh, dried paint. And so you just got to be very mindful of that. You just pick that right off with your fingernail. Again, just being very careful not to pick the bristles themselves. You're just being very gentle when you pick that off. You can see it's kind of annoying. And it can mess up your brush stroke as well. Uh, and also mess up your lines. And again, just being a general headache in any kind of regard. If you're playing with that, it's just... It happened to me a million times that it just, it's a headache. And don't do it. <laughs> but there it is. That's the cloak. Uh, do not be afraid to give it a try. We've got even more painting tutorials in the Silver Mini Wargaming Vault. You can watch another one today about how I painted the base of the model. Just click the link in the video description below and watch it right now. If you don't have a Mini Wargaming vault membership you can click on the link sign up for a free seven day trial make sure that you get the silver membership and you can get access to the, all the painting tutorials and you'll get instant access to over a thousand painting tutorials already in the vault and so thank you for watching and happy wargaming